Hello. Uh, welcome to the first Political Action Club event of this year. Um, I want to introduce you to the three speakers. They're going to speak in panel style, and then afterwards you are, re uh, well not required, you are <laughs> encouraged to ask any question that has to do with politics, um, government, that you would like to. So um, Ian Freeman, this young man, has, is the co-founder of Free Talk Live. He's also one of the Robin Hooders in Keene, and he's run for office. Representative Mark Warden is from Goffstown. Um, he's a Republican, and he's also a real estate agent. And Garrett Ian is one of the Robin Hooders. He's run for state rep in Concord, and actually um, helped to defeat a 26-year veteran. So you can do something when you're young. He was only 18 when he did it, and he's also one of the Robin Hooders. So I'm going to turn it over to the three gentlemen. Thank you, um, everybody, for coming out. And hopefully we're going to just, I guess, do some introductory speaking briefly and open up to questions. So if you guys have anything you want to ask at some point, we'll put the microphone out there, and you can ask whatever you want. So I'm Ian Freeman, as she mentioned, I host a talk radio program called Free Talk Live. It airs seven nights a week. You can go to freetalklive.com and you can download episodes, listen live, etc., things like that. I got involved in um, kind of the, the movement for freedom back when I was a teenager. Um, I learned probably when I was around your age that, uh, that, that I was being lied to uh, by the people that call themselves the government. And turned out they were lying about a whole lot of stuff. Uh, one of the big things that was a real eye-opener to me was the war on drugs, uh, which I see as a war on our friends and family members. Um, and that's exactly what it is. And that, that kind of opened up this door to me where I found out that they were telling me all kinds of lies and misinformation. And then I discovered that not only were they lying, but they were also hurting people, you know, peaceful people, people like you, who haven't hurt anybody else you know, these folks are being, uh, our neighbors and our friends are being arrested. Uh, they're being put in jail cells and they've never harmed anybody else. And so I just really got upset about that and I wanted to do something uh, about it. So I started to learn more about what freedom really is. And what I learned was that liberty or freedom means that you should be free to live your life how you want, so long as you don't hurt anyone else. And if you hurt somebody, well then something should be done about that. But as long as you don't, you know, steal from somebody or physically harm someone, uh, then you should be free to live your life how you want. And that's the philosophy that I live by. Um, it's a philosophy that I want other people to, uh, to understand, and hopefully we can express some of that here today. So um, that's kind of a little bit about me and, and how I got into uh, the, the activism movement. I actually wasn't born in New Hampshire. I was born in Florida, and I moved up here as part of the Free State Project. Uh, Ms. Ian mentioned that uh, Mark is a Republican, I'm a registered Democrat, although I'm certainly more of a libertarian, it's just that in New Hampshire you have to pick one party or the other. Um, definitely love the ideas of freedom, and I'm really glad you all came out to listen today. Thank you. Damas y caballeros, bienvenidos. Gracias por venir hoy a nuestro concurso para platicar de la política. So that was, a, that was a nod to the Spanish class here, but uh, welcome. My name is Mark Borden, and as mentioned earlier, I'm a state rep, so I'm a legislator in the New Hampshire State Legislature, representing the towns of Goffstown, Ware, and Deering, and I'm now my second term. So I am sort of your non-traditional uh, legislator in that I don't follow the party line, and I often vote against what other Republicans are standing for or would say and vote against what some of the Democrats are uh, voting for. So I try to, I consider myself anyway a very independent thinker and actor in the legislature. So I, we're going to talk about a number of things today, including uh, things outside of the political spectrum, but my purpose here is to talk about what we can do uh, within politics, within government, at least on the legislative side of government to uh, provide more freedom and uh, less government control of your lives. So one of the things you wonder is, well, how does it apply to you? And you're thinking, heck, I can't vote yet, right? Unless you guys aren't even legally old enough to vote. Well, the fact is that the government is spending your future income today. They're making promises and buying off favors today 
that come due tomorrow when you guys are in your working years. Not only you folks, but your children, and perhaps their children now are, have debt the day they're born because of uh, what's going on in Washington and in some of the state capitals. So it's another reason to think about politics and how it's going to affect you, and maybe you'll have a, a say in educating others, your peers, perhaps your, even your parents, on why more government in your life is not necessarily a good thing. Unlike these guys, I got started sort of late in life. Uh, it, I, it wasn't until my mid-30s before I even started paying attention to politics, so it's never too late. Well, thanks for coming down, everyone. My name is Garrett, and I grew up in Concord. Um, I like what Mark said about, and Ian said about how when you see things that you want to change in the world, there's kind of the prescribed system that politics is supposed to provide, where one is uh, allowed to go in, voice their position, have someone who claims to represent them vote on that issue. Um, but there's also more that one can do that's outside of that structure. And uh, for me, that's what's caught my attention in the past few years and been what I have pursued. Um, out of high school and college, I ran for state rep a few times. That's a great way to get started with promoting a message, spreading ideas with people, because you do get lots of free airtime from it. Um, but there's other projects that one can do if they get involved with their friends and their communities uh, that one can self-start that I think can make a major impact and change things even in better ways than the prescribed system allows for. Uh, so in Keene, New Hampshire, where I've been living about the past year and a half, there's many individuals who are, in, uh, who are active with different police accountability organizations. Uh, there's a number in the area, and we'll go out and just record the police, making an objective record. And I'd say in, to a large extent that's forwarded the conversation of uh, responsible community policing. I actually happen to have a background um, in schooling and law enforcement. That's what I got a degree from, uh, university I attended. And uh, like politics, where there's a prescribed system for changing things, the criminal justice system in a similar way is something that if one sees problems with it that they want to change, you could either get a job within that system and try and change the system from within, or you could work outside of that system and try and uh, build a new framework or a new alternative for how you'd like to see things done. Um, so uh, another thing I was just involved in at the past month is I was on the police accountability tour with my friend Pete Ayer, and we were going around the country to different cities, checking with local activist groups, and seeing what the status on this ground was, whether it came to crime or police brutality or police accountability issues. And uh, it was very eye-opening to see that each place has their own issues and uh, their own challenges facing it. I think here in New Hampshire, we're very privileged to have pretty safe communities, pretty low crime rates, um, and pretty low rates of police brutality from at least uh, relative to some other areas of the country. Um, Another project that I'm also involved with in Keene, it involves video cameras, is Robin Hood of Keene, which is where myself and my friends, sometimes Ian will come out with us, we'll fill parking meters so that people don't get parking tickets. That's a way in which one can very easily and effectively prevent uh, this penalty that people shouldn't really have to suffer. It seems like a, an annoyance more than anything, parking tickets. For just a nickel, you could save someone $5 or even more than that. Um, so that's, I'd say, a really effective way that individuals can just get together and make changes to the way that things are done. Uh, myself, Ian, and uh, four of our friends won a lawsuit recently that the city of Keene had filed against us. Uh, basically, they didn't have any foundation for the lawsuit, and the judge threw it out because they can't claim that just filling parking meters is against the law or illegal or, or harassment or anything like that. So, um, yeah. I don't know where we want to go from here. Well, it was actually two lawsuits uh, that, uh, that we won. The city of Keene, I also live in Keene, and uh, the city of Keene, which is really just a group of men and women who force their way upon people through the threat of violence, uh, they came after us with these lawsuits to try to stop us from going out and saving people from getting parking tickets. Uh, we did not stop, the, uh, even though the suit happened and it took several months for it to, to all play out. Uh, the Robin Hooders, as we're called, uh, went, continued on the streets, continued saving people from getting parking tickets. And Keene, uh, estimates are that we've saved at least 5,000, maybe even as many as 8,000 people from getting parking tickets. Now, I don't know how many of y'all are old enough to drive? Old enough to drive? Okay. Have any of you, have any of you gotten a parking ticket before? Okay, a few of you. How does it feel when that happens? It feels pretty awful, right? So if you can stop somebody from getting a ticket, then you can make someone's day. Because what we do is we leave uh, little cards, and we've actually brought some of them here. Oh, they're, on a table in the oh, they're in the back? Okay. So you can actually see the Robin Hood card. There's a picture of Robin Hood on it. On the back side, it says, 
Your meter expired, but we saved you from the king's tariff. And then it gives some donation information, so you could send, you know, some money to uh, to help us buy more nickels to save more people. Anyway, you can take a look at that when you get a chance. Um, but the city was actually accused. The city attorneys and folks that work for them were accusing us of harassing, intimidating, and threatening their employees. Now, I mean, I'm not really an intimidating looking guy, so I'm not sure where that came from, but they essentially wanted to make up the story about us to try to make us look like bad people, when what we're really doing is out there saving people from getting parking tickets, and they wanted to, uh, they wanted the, the people in the area to believe what they were saying about us, you know, considering that most people haven't met us, they don't know us individually, so they just believed that, oh, well, we're out there threatening their employees, and it was, it was absolutely ridiculous. Uh, when we went to trial, there was three full days in court where the city uh, attorneys had plenty of opportunity to provide evidence of the supposed threatening and harassing that was going on, and they didn't because they didn't have any evidence like that because we're peaceful people and we want to see more peace in the world. And it doesn't seem like the political system is a real effective way of doing that. And so I, I can understand why some of you might be pretty frustrated by maybe whatever you've observed with politics, because it seems like Republicans and Democrats, they just want to control you. They just want to tell you how to live. And if you don't do what they say, well, then you get to go to a jail cell, which is somewhere I've been, by the way. Um, even though I was mentioning earlier that, uh, you know, I was talking about how they, the government people hurt other people who've never harmed anyone else. I've never hurt another individual ever, but I've spent 60 days in a jail cell. And that's because I stood in front of a police car in Keene as they were about to, uh, they were arresting a friend of mine. She was enjoying her afternoon in the park uh, in Central Square in Keene, right in the heart of downtown Keene. She was enjoying her afternoon. She had an, uh, an open container and, uh, and I had said that I was going to stand in front of the police car the next time I saw them arresting somebody who had never hurt anybody else. She didn't hurt anybody. Nobody had complained about what she was doing in the park that day. There was no victim except for her. She was the victim. The police made her into the victim because otherwise she was just enjoying her afternoon until they came along and they started threatening her and then they started dragging her away. So I stood in front of the police car and so did three other people. We all got arrested for it. I was convicted of uh, obstructing government administration. I was, um, and that was a jury trial. So I went to trial and then I went to jail for two months. I've been arrested six times, I think. And all of those times, not once did I ever hurt anybody. They were, they were all for victimless crimes or non-cooperation and civil disobedience. So civil disobedience is something I have a lot of experience with. It's something that I find a very, very powerful thing to do. Um, it brings a lot of attention to different issues. And if you visit my website, which is freekeen.com, uh, Garrett's also one of the bloggers at Freekeen, uh, there's a lot of information about a whole bunch of things that we've been doing over the years there in Keene that might be of interest to you, so. Yeah, I'd like to speak on the civil disobedience angle. Uh, Ian talks about how he made the decision to put himself uh, on the front line, so to speak, and choose to get arrested in the sense of sitting in front of a police car when the police tell you not to. Um, that's going to result in some action. I myself have also seen the inside of a holding cell, fortunately not a jail cell, um, but I was arrested at a protest in Manchester along with nine other, eight other people, nine total, simply for being at the protest. It went on about two and a half hours. Some people had chalked and they were arrested for chalking, which some of that got thrown out, some of it got upheld. Um, but at the end of the day, myself, a few other people were arrested for not moving fast enough from an order to move. So uh, it's, if you go out and you put yourself out there and you, if you choose to chalk a message on the sidewalk, which is totally legal, if you choose to hold a camera near a police officer, totally legal, um, you're still introducing yourself to some amount of, of potential resistance. Fortunately, things are changing um, because police are getting more used to the fact that uh, individuals are allowed to and protected in the sense that they're recording or uh, documenting public activity. Um, but you are, without trying to, you can still get arrested, you can still get caged, and you can still have to go to trial. Um, but myself and my friends, we worked together on a particular case I was facing with the Manchester arrest. Uh, we had practice trials, mock trials. I took mock trial in high school and I felt that really helped prepare me for court in real life. And when you, uh, you can't expect justice from the legal system. Uh, there's a, a large restriction on information. 
but you can make sure that you get all of your information out there, that the public record is the entire case that you want to make for yourself. The internet is an incredible tool for this. A video camera is an incredible tool for this. Um, the ability to just speak freely and post freely is something that allows you to control the frame if, it, if and when the state or some organization is uh, you know, reacting to information that you're putting out there, a perspective that you're putting out there. So um, civil disobedience I think is great. I encourage people who feel compelled to do it to do it, um, but it's not something that I'm personally in involved with or doing because I feel that I will get enough reaction from the authorities just by offering uh, my constitutionally protected resistance to their activities. As we've seen with the Robin Hood case, now fortunately that was thrown out, but it was still a, a grueling three days in court that myself and Ian, four of our friends, had to sit through. And all in all, it was a lot of fun, but yeah, it, it is, uh, you know, it's... Well, it was especially fun when we got uh, Fox News, MSNBC, Good Morning America, all kinds of news coverage that uh, we otherwise would not have gotten for doing this Robin Hooding thing of saving people from getting parking tickets. When the city sued us is when all of a sudden this thing went viral. I mean, it was all over the place. And a lot of people say viral and they don't really know what that means. This thing really did. Uh, it was all over the news. And we literally got millions of dollars in free press coverage for what we're doing in Keene. And if it weren't for the city aggressing against us with this lawsuit, it never, we never would have gotten that level of coverage. So we actually sent them flowers to thank them for, for that. Let me ask you guys what you think of the notion that courts are always unbiased and that you can get a fair shake and that justice system works. Because that's what we were taught in school in civics class, that the judges are neutral, you know, they don't take a position, they never make a mistake. You guys have had more experiences with this than I. Uh, what sort of information I, would be a good takeaway for these young people to learn about that process? 